it just doesn't go hand in hand. And unfortunately, I'm one of those people that instead of buying once and buying well, I buy badly and then I buy twice. So uh, I, it, it, always, it, always, it always gets me. It always gets me. Um, so I thought I'd just roll this back around. We're talking about nutritional supplements because we're interested in our health and we're interested in how these nutritional supplements affect our bodies. Um, and a big buzzword at the moment is the microbiome. And a lot of people yes. will think, We'll, we'll marry the two terms together, microbiome and probiotic supplements. Now, those are not the two, ele those are not the only two elements of the microbiome by my understanding. So could you just put us all on the same page when we're talking, when we're talking about microbiome, what exactly are we talking about? Well, it's interesting you should bring that up because one of the very first supplements I ever bought before I went to Central America was a probiotic that I got at the health food store. Nobody else knew what a probiotic was, and uh, the store did, and they got me on a probiotic to help with, you know, the, the travel problems that people have when they go into Mexico and Central America. So I, I learned about that 50 years ago. Uh, nowadays, it has really caught on uh, because, of course, now we're recognizing the importance of the microbiome or these beneficial bacteria that inhabit our intestinal system and that this is very much a part of health and that if we don't actually pay attention to our microbiome, we may have issues that are um, a challenge for us. So what is this microbiome? This microbiome is a population of trillions of bacteria. Now these bacteria can be beneficial and there are bacteria which can be harmful. So we are concerned about maintaining a healthy probiotic bacterial balance. Now the interest, this has always sort of been where when I first got onto it, it was just take the probiotic, just take the bacteria. Then over time it was, well, we need more than one type of bacteria, let's add that. And so over the decades leading up until probably maybe the last 15 or 20 years, that's been the idea. Just put this bacteria, freeze-dried bacteria, let's put it into a capsule, and when you take it, the warmth of your body will bring them back and they will start to populate in the intestinal tract. Well, it does do that, but that's sort of a simplistic approach as we understand it now. Now there, in addition to the words probiotics, people are starting to hear the word prebiotic and the word postbiotic. And that's a very innovative concept, which is now starting to be recognized and embraced. And so what do we mean by that? Well, all of these bacteria need to be fed. Their favorite food is fiber. And so when we consume a, bi a probiotic, they're going to live off the fiber in our diet. If we don't have fiber in our diet, they're not going to get the best food for themselves. So now what companies are doing is they're starting to include the prebiotics, the fiber in the capsules with the probiotics so that the bacteria have food to live on. When they start to awaken, there is their food there. Now we've even come further than that in that we are starting to look at how to nurture these probiotics through a fermentation process which can go on for years before they get into a capsule. And the reason that is important is why are bacteria important? Well, we're now just discovering it's not so much that these bacteria eat the fiber, it's what they produce. It is the waste product of a bacteria that becomes actually what's called a postbiotic metabolite. So bacteria produce compounds, and these compounds are called metabolites, and these compounds are the very important additions to human health that the bacteria bring to us. And so it's not only just having good bacteria, that's important, but it is really what the bacteria provide us that is the most important part. So then we have to look at, well, many different types of bacteria produce many types of metabolites. And so we don't want just one type of bacteria. We may want three or six or 12. And there are some that are going up to as many as 60 uh, different types of bacteria. 
which may sound like a lot till you consider your own intestinal tract may have as many as 400 different types of bacteria. So we want to nourish the most important ones, the most prolific. So now we're looking at products that are fermented for years to create these metabolites so that when you take the product, you not only have the metabolites already formed, you have the food for the bacteria, you have the bacteria, and then you have these post bacterial metabolites. And all of that together is a more complete approach. Not to say that there's anything wrong with taking just a probiotic supplement, but the probiotic supplement then has to become active, start to consume food, start to produce these metabolites, which is what they've been doing you know, all these years. Now we're able to actually uh, buy supplements that are further advanced because all of this has been done before they even get into your system. Mm. So they're much more primed and ready to go once we get them. So these probiotic metabolites, if they're the wrong type of bacteria, they start to produce things that might be harmful mm. to us. We hear of things like C. diff and E. coli and other types of bacteria, which it's the job of the good bacteria to keep under control. Don't allow them to encroach. And so the probiotics have become really important, not only for the fact for digestive health, which is where most people think of them, but now we're finding out that there are connections between the probiotics and brain health and mm. cardiovascular health and other health conditions, which are also then positively benefited by the right bacterial balance. And conversely, when we don't have that good balance, then we are more apt to deal with issues associated with that deficiency. And it's more than just digestive now. It can be such as brain health, um, heart health, mm. um, mood, uh, things like this can also play a very important role. So probiotics are now starting to gain some of the respect that many of us have had for a long time, but now through better understanding, we understand even more why they're important. And then of course, the foods that you eat also play a role in mm. nourishing your own intestinal microbiome. Exactly, and and that that's the thing that really stands out to me actually, is that you can have as many probiotics as you like, and you can take them every day, and you can take them in, in huge variations, but if you're not eating the right foods to actually feed those bacteria, the positive bacteria, bacteria that you're trying to populate, then you may as well not be taking the probiotics in the first place because they're not going to have the opportunity to do their process, to do their metabolic processes, to make those metabolites. So if you're taking those probiotics and then you're just reverting back to really uh, poor food with really poor nutritional quality without any of the fiber or without any of these these core foods that these these probiotics are feeding on, then are, are they really having any benefit at all? Well, it's the point I made earlier is that all of this begins with the foods that you feed yourself. If you are eating good quality foods and a good variety of foods, you're going to get a wide variety of nutrition. If you are eating poor quality and deficient foods, where are those nutrients gonna come from? And the same thing with the probiotics. If they're not being well nourished, they're not going to do for you what they're capable of doing. And again, the, the foundation is the supplements won't do for you what you're unwilling to do for yourself. If you won't eat better foods, if you won't avoid harmful foods or, or deficient foods, if you won't do those things, the supplements, they may give you some benefit, but they are certainly not capable of doing what you won't do for yourself. And so the amount of benefit you get is going to be vastly reduced and it's more important for people that do that to rethink the importance of the foods that they consume. Exactly, exactly. And and what, what I've been reading um, in terms of not just about probiotics um, and, and indeed the bacterial function of the microbiome, but also the, the building block minerals and the building bo block vitamins that we can take in to give 
um, our, our digestive system the best opportunity at being able to fun function in its best term, like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, um, and these vitamins that allow us to make, um, now I get this word right, I've been doing a little bit of my, my swatting up, but our, our endogenous functions, whereby we're creating these, um, the, the, these vitamins within our body, but we need the building blocks in order to do that. So not just about putting bacteria into the body, but also putting additional vitamins